When choosing solid-state relay, it should be based on the specific application conditions and the technical characteristics of SSR. One thing to highlight is that the overcurrent and overvoltage conditions must be considered against the low capacity of SSR in actual use and selection, as this will help to extend the service life and guarantee the reliability of the units. In today's video, we're going to give you some tips on how to select the best SSR solution for your control system. Number one, determine the load type of your solid state relay. There are three types of load resistive, inductive, and capacitive loads. Different SSRs coupled with certain load type will deliver better performance. For example, zero crossing solid state relays work best with resistive loads. Random turn on solid state relays are ideal for inductive loads. DC solid state relays, of course, are particularly designed for DC loads. SSRs can switch normal loads on and off, but for some abnormal loads, Specific instructions must be followed to prevent excessive current and overvoltage from damaging the device. Hence, you need to determine the maximum AC or DC voltage and current for your load. The point to be noted is that the switching current flowing through the SSR output should not exceed the rated output current as stipulated in the product specifications. The possible inrush current must not exceed the overload capacity of the relay. Number two, determine the low voltage and current. The low power supply's voltage must not be greater than the rated output voltage of the solid state relay and should be higher than the stipulated minimum output voltage. The maximum peak voltage value for solid state relays should not exceed the value of the transient voltage. When switching off the AC inductive load, single phase and three phase motors or capacitive loads and over voltage which may be twice the peak voltage of the power supply, could possibly occur. The SSR's rated current should be determined based on different load types, depending on whether there is an inrush current or not. Number three, determine the control voltage required to activate the SSR. It is the SSR's control voltage that is required to electrify your load. Unlike electromechanical relays, which are typically controlled by an unvaried voltage, solid state relays have a wide range of input control signals, either VDC or VAC. Number four, define how many poles you wish to switch. When you select a solid state relay, you need to know how many poles are to be switched to the load. ATO offers single phase and three phase solid state relays. For a single phase AC load, you'll need a one-pole single-phase AC SSR. For three-phase AC loads, you'll need to decide if you want to switch all three phases to the load or if you want to switch two of the three phases. The third is then directly connected. Number five, determine the mounting pattern, panel or DIN rail mount. After you have defined the technical capabilities required for your solid-state relay, you need to choose which SSR will be suited to your application with regards to housing, connection style, etc. Solid state relays stocked in ATO are available in different mounting configurations, panel or DIN rail mounted, all featuring screw connections. Number six, mind the ambient temperature. What is the ambient temperature in the location where the SSR will be installed? It's essential to know the operating environment temperature when it comes to properly selecting an SSR, as this will determine which heat sink to choose. Given that high temperatures can derail the SSR's current, the maximum SSR current rating will be subject to the ambient temperature where it will be fixed. Therefore, a heat sink is highly recommended to be integrated into the SSR to optimize its performance by providing excellent heat dissipation. ATO can help you choose the right solid state relay for your application. Browse our full line of solid state relays as well as many other products and services via the link in the description.